So how does a nice believer that loves God with 100% of, uh, uh, of her, her life become a witch? Why would you even want to? Yeah, well, that's a great question. And I'm so excited to tell this part of my story. So yeah, like you said, you know, I love the Lord. Um, there was a time before I was radically transformed that I was living in darkness. So for about nine years of my life, I did so many drugs and was out on the streets. But around the age of 13, even though I was in a Christian home, I beca became extremely depressed. I was bullied at school. I didn't have any self-worth. There was a lot of abuse happening in the home. And so I remember going to a friend's house because my mother didn't allow us to watch anything. She would say, I don't want anything demonic on my TV. That meant Smurfs. That meant The Simpsons. I'm dating myself right now. That meant anything that had rebellion or sorcery, she would not allow us to watch. But I knew if I went to a friend's house, I could watch whatever I wanted to. And so I went to this friend's house and the movie came out in 1996. It was called The Craft. And this movie was about four witches in high school. And I watched the movie and I was completely overtaken by the movie, meaning I wanted to become like these witches. What, what were you looking for with this power? Uh, uh, did you ever know? Power, control, control in a, in a situation in a life that I felt like I had no control. And so it looked like to me, these four witches, they were going to their high school and they were making these bullies pay for picking on them. They were mm -hmm. getting, you know, people to like them and get it, all the things that they wanted. And so I looked at that like, I want that hmm. too. Uh, by the way, I hear the term a lot, Wicca. What is Wicca? We yes, Wicca, Wiccan, um, Kagan um, beliefs. These are people that practice witchcraft and they believe in, there is not one God. There is many gods, goddesses, um, that earthly things can have spirits like a tree can have a spirit and animals can have a spirit. And so all of these things have power and they were all kind of connected as one. And so that's in a nutshell, and there's many different categories of that, but in a nutshell, that's what it is. They don't believe in, in some may believe in God, like we believe in God, but they believe he's not the only one, that there are all sorts of other gods. And in fact, that we are also gods. Um, well, how did you leave Wicca or, or, or witchcraft? How did you uh, get dissatisfied? Uh, and and uh, I would have to believe that you open yourself up to powerful, familiar spirits through witchcraft. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, it started real innocent. Like I see today, people getting into having healing crystals and mm -hmm. burning sage and uh, looking for an energy or a power that was going to help me to just uh, be happier in life. And so something that started very innocent, I would get the spell books and, you know, just do these little, little things I didn't think were a big deal, became deeper and darker and to the point where like on Halloween, we'd be sitting around in a circle summonsing up these deities, gods, goddesses to come, which mm -hmm. were they, we know they're demons in the Christian world, to come into the, the place where we were and to enter into our bodies and give us power. And so the way that I got out of it, most people probably think I'm going to say that God just came down and just like wrecked my life and just power came on me. I actually got so deep into it that the things that started happening around the house it was like the only way I can describe it was like a, living in a haunted house. I was so terrified of how deep I had gotten into it and what began to happen that I actually got out of it um, without even yet encountering God, which happened a little bit later. I got out of it because I remember my mom saying, you don't need to be involved in that stuff and it'll take you out. And I remember going, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to have, I don't want to practice spells anymore. And, and it took a while for the Lord to really grip my heart, but I got out of it because I felt like I was living in a haunted house. And if I didn't get out of it, that these spirits would kill me in my sleep. Hmm. Well, well, um, you, in addition to drugs, you became a cutter. Yeah. Uh, what, what causes 
so, uh, a young person to become a cutter and how bad was it? For me, it was very bad. Uh, it started off in, in high school. Uh, I came home one day, I was bullied. I was just having a terrible day, you know, being bullied and picked on at school and then coming home to a, a place that's supposed to be safe and then being bullied, abused and picked on by your parents and your family. It's just like a one, two punch and the enemy, he, he knew what he was doing by setting me up that way. And so I saw it as a, a, a way to escape. There was so much pain inside. I thought hmm. I have to let the pain out. And if I cut, maybe a little bit of that pain can escape. And really uh, many times, Sid, you know what I would hear? I would hear a whisper like this, go cut yourself, cut yourself, cut yourself. It was that like was I was those, being- That was those demons. Yes. They, they, were, they were inside, outside. Yes. And, and they only have one purpose, use you and destroy you. Right. That's it. Exactly. And at one point I remember looking at my arm and counting the cuts. I had 56 cuts all up and down my arm. My arm looked like it went through a shredder. It was something I did almost every single Hmm. day. So you left that, but God's hand was on your life. And you, how, how did you make the full, I mean, you're such a radical believer in the Messiah today that when I hear your background, I say, tilt, it doesn't compute. Right. What was, what did you, what was the process? After about nine years of witchcraft, which led of course to drug addiction, I was addicted to meth and heroin in and out of jails. I mean, the whole thing, at one point I was, living in people's sheds in their backyards, like an animal, hiding, using meth, just, it was insane. And I got pregnant with my daughter who is 12 today. And I got to the lowest point in my life. And I remember just screaming out to God, God help me with the most gut wrenching scream. And I was just done. I, I, I had not eaten in days, not showered in days. I had no home, no life, no job, nothing. And I was a drug addict and I was pregnant and I cried out to God. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you at that moment, I knew God hears me. He's going to come and rescue me. And sure enough, I remember hearing just a big old knock on the door a few days later, a big ginormous knock, which you know is the police when you hear that kind of knock. And they came in to this hotel that I was in using drugs. And uh, they arrested me and I, I took that long drive to jail and the lady ministered to me in the car, the police officer. She literally ministered to me. I don't even know who this lady is. She just said, you have a purpose. You know, God's got a good plan for your life. You don't need that. And I remember her. I don't remember her name or anything. And I'm telling you, God used her to really minister to me. And I never went back from that point on. Um, well, I'm, I'm, you, you know what? The most amazing phenomena I observe, you know, I'm, I observe things, I feel things. The minute you opened your mouth about God revealing himself to you, the presence of God was on those words. The same presence of God that came on you is coming on the people that are yeah. listening. Um, but uh, I have to go back to the witchcraft just for a moment, and I have to ask you, what does witchcraft have to do with Halloween? Halloween is just trick or treat, children having fun, costume parties, uh, Christians and non-Christians alike celebrating. The Christians can say, we don't think anything about uh, uh, the, the, the bad things from Halloween. But let's start out for basics. What is Halloween? Well, Halloween is a celebration of the dead. And it started out with Celtic Druids years and years and years and years ago. This whole entire holiday or day was created to summons up the God of, of the dead. And they would, they would basically call on this, the people who had passed on who were in the graves for their spirits to come and roam through the earth on this day that they believe that there was a veil that was thin crossing over from summer into the next month. They believe 
that that veil was thin going into the next season. And so because the veil was thin between the spirit world and the earth world, that the two could collide. And so that's what they wanted. It was all steeped in witchcraft. It was all steeped in communicating with the dead. That's the original root and origin of this holiday. So much so that they believe that this happened and they felt this happening, that they would disguise themselves in costumes so that these spirits that were roaming around the earth on this day, that they wouldn't try to take vengeance out on them as a human, mm. that they would, the spirits would see them dressed up as a, a ghost and they would pass the human by and go to the next one. And so that's where we incorporate costumes and dressing up. That's why a lot of times when you see costumes, although you see nice angels and these things, but most of them are scary. They are horrific. They're ghouls and goblins and all the things that bring fear. And, and by the way, if there's one spirit that we've seen rear its ugly head because of COVID, it's the spirit of fear. We don't right. need anything in addition Come on. Uh, to, to bring fear on people. Right. Uh, but uh, do you think or no? I'm just curious. Do, wit do witches use Halloween as a point of contact to um, either recruit people or harm people? Yes, absolutely. Now, I will I will tell you this. For me in my life, when I was practicing witchcraft, I wasn't around witches and warlocks who were doing what I would call like evil things. At least in my view, it wasn't too bad, like sacrifices, killing animals, even kidnapping children, all of these things. I wasn't around that group, but I did know, which most people know, that that thing does happen. This is a day that witches and Satanists look forward to, like Christians look forward to Resurrection Sunday or Christmas or celebrating Jesus. This is a holiday that people are, are witches, Satanists, people that are doing sorcery and magic. They are on high alert. They will rest all that whole week so that that night they can be up throughout the night practicing spells, the craft, even roaming around. You notice that. If you look at statistics that night, there's more kidnappings, there's more uh, people going missing, there's more crime, there's more murders that happen. That night is like the devil's play play night. And, and even the person that uh, started the satanic church, he's passed on now, but he said he loves that Christians allow their children to participate and worship the devil at least one night of the year. Uh, now that you are a believer and you minister all over the world, um, you told me you had a meeting where actually warlocks did the opposite of what their boss wanted them to do, Satan. Yeah. Tell me about that meeting. Yes. Yeah, so uh, well, it was a church service. I go to church in Orlando under the leadership of Daniel Kalenda. And at the end of service, people are always flooding the altars. They want prayer. And so any other Sunday, it's nothing out of the normal. I see these four people and they waited the whole time. They kind of were standing over off to the side and they waited for us to be done. And they came up and they said, we are witches. And there was one guy that he said, and, and I was trained since I was a little boy to be a warlock. And they came and said, we are here for deliverance. They said, somebody it makes me so emotional just even talking about it. They said, somebody shared your video on Facebook about the dangers of witchcraft. We saw your testimony and we just feel like we don't want to do this. We want to give our lives to Jesus. I was like so shocked what, hmm. just hearing it. I gathered my husband uh, our prayer director and another lady and the four of us were praying with them and um, they were delivered and we saw we saw the manifest and, and demons leave them and we saw Jesus come in and literally rescue them the same way that he rescued me and they were crying and, and you just totally surrendered to Christ. In a moment I'm going to have you pray but you're going to uh, break curses of ancestry 
that are on generationally on people and uh and and break the spirit of witchcraft and the demon and deliverance the demonic stronghold on people uh i call it a freedom prayer but just before you share that freedom prayer i would like you to talk eyeball to eyeball to the people watching us right now the way that police woman spoke to you mm -hmm. in in the police car and lead them in a prayer of knowing the messiah not just i believe because i've been taught since i was this little but really knowing god yeah absolutely well if you're watching this i will just say that it, you didn't click on it because you are that smart to just jump on here. You are watching this because Jesus Christ himself loves you so much so that he would have you on this particular broadcast at this particular moment to get your attention to say in the loudest voice possible, my child, I love you. I am with you. I have a plan for your life. My plan is not to harm you, but to give you and your family a hope and a future. And so I don't know what you're walking through at this moment, but I do know of someone who is the mighty deliverer. I don't know how you feel at this moment, but I do know someone that is the comforter of all uncomfortable things we've ever walked through. And his name is Jesus. And I, it doesn't matter even if I feel like there's you're on here and you're even in the church. You, you feel like I'm already saved, but there's something missing. There's something lacking. And I just want to bring you back to this place of knowing God and recommitting your life or committing your heart to him, maybe for the very first time. All you have to do is call on the name of Jesus, confess with your mouth, and he is Lord. And, and the Bible says you're saved. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so right now, right where you are, I want you to call on the name of Jesus and I want you to ask him to come and be Lord of your life that from this day forward, you are going to follow him every day. Listen, you don't have to get it all figured out. I was a drug addict. I lived in the streets. I know that life, but I'm telling you, even when I didn't understand how I was going to do tomorrow or the next day or the day after, I just said, at this moment, I give you my all. At this moment, I give it all to you. And if you do that right now, Jesus will come in and he will be the way, the truth and the life for you right now. So even let us know in the comments, say, I'm recommitting my life. I'm, I'm asking God to come into my life right now. And so I just pray, Father, I just pray right now as they're recommitting, they're having that conversation with you, Father, even as tears are flowing, that you are just moving mightily by your spirit. I thank you, Jesus, that you will forgive sins, Father, that you would wash them clean in your blood because of the finished work of the cross. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Father. I thank you. And did you want me to pray for deliverance too? Uh, yes, but I want to just add one thing yeah. to what Jenny just said. Yeah. As a traditional Jewish man, not knowing, <laughs> it, 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 uh, as it says in the Bible, my left hand from my right hand, so to speak, when it comes to the right prayer of knowing the Messiah, I prayed a shorter prayer than Jenny. I prayed, Jesus, help, and it <laughs> revolutionized my life for the last 50 years on that little prayer. Yeah. So it's not a formula. It's a heart desire to know God, right. not know about him, but to know him. And yeah. Jenny, there are people watching us right now that have uh, curses that were spoken to ancestors that they don't even know these ancestors' names. There's right. people that are suffering under witchcraft and spells right now. And I know you know the man mm -hmm. from Galilee that can set them free, and you have been granted authority from heaven to pray for them right now. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that you've gone before us and you have broken every curse. By your blood, I decree and declare that every generational curse is broken now by the authority of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father God, that you are going before us and you're burning up every enemy. Witchcraft, we break and bind your power right now in the name of Jesus. We say, get out, get out of the homes, get out of their hearts. Get out of their bloodline in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that your blood has already broken every curse, every spell, every hex, every vex, every bit of voodoo, sorcery, magic, incantations. It is completely destroyed by the power in the name of Jesus. And right now, I thank you, God, that you are delivering your people with a mighty hand because you love them, Father. I thank you that eyes are opening right now, that ears are opening right now, that hearts are realigned with the word of truth. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I just decree that for you and your whole bloodline, that it is saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Father, I thank you that you have wiped away our past. We are not marked by our past, by what people in our lives have done, by what our father has done, by what our mother has done. But God, we are marked by your Holy Spirit this day forward. I thank you that they are walking in truth, in freedom, and in liberty in the name of Jesus. And I just want to pray this as well. If you already know that you have dabbled in witchcraft or new age practices maybe you didn't realize that healing crystals that you don't go to healing crystals for healing but you're supposed to go to jesus only maybe you didn't realize things that you were partaking in were uh their origins were in the demonic realm maybe you didn't understand but now you know and I just want you to be able to renounce those things. You know, you confess them before the Lord, you renounce them, and then you just pray and ask God to change you. And so you can say, I renounce all new age practices. I renounce all witchcraft. I renounce any participation in the occult world right now in Jesus' mighty name. And I ask you, God, to forgive me, to wash me. I repent of that. And now I look forward to you, Jesus. I keep my eyes only on you. God, teach me, lead me, guide me every day of my life in Jesus' mighty name. And Amen. Holy Spirit, I ask you to seal these prayers yes. and let your shalom, your supernatural completeness, your peace just descend on everyone that is watching us right now. And Father God, I pray that you would put inside of everyone watching a hunger for more of you and that we would be praying this prayer of Moses, God, show me your glory. Amen. Amen.